Ladies, gentlemen, fellow Jokers out there, it's time to do an everything that we know so far about Joker 2, Fili Adieu. So this video will cover what we know about the movie, not only from its inception, but also going into a deep dive and discussion over what we know about the movie's plot thanks to all of the clues that we got when filming took place earlier this year. And there's, there's quite a bit to piece together there that I, I'm pretty confident paints a fairly clear picture, and I would love to know your guys' thoughts on that down in the comments below. So if you're fairly new to Joker or you don't know much about the sequel, this video is perfect for you. This video is also good for those of you who are fans who might not know every detail that you might want to know. So go ahead and like this video if you do go on to enjoy it. I'd really, really appreciate that. And consider subscribing for more updates on not only Joker, but when the trailer comes out, we'll be breaking that down and all good things like that. So to begin with, we have a little bit of a brief overview at the beginning getting here before getting into the plot details that we know. After a long time of speculation of a sequel and teases from both Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix, eventually we got the title reveal for Joker fully adieu on June 7th of 2022, when Todd Phillips uploaded a snapshot of the script and Joaquin Phoenix reading it. The sequel is once again co-written by Scott Silver and Todd Phillips. Now as for filming, it began on December 10th, 2022, and where Todd Phillips posted to his Instagram a photo of Joaquin Phoenix's character Arthur Fleck in a scene that likely takes place in Arkham Asylum, and filming concluded on April 5th of 2023. If you're a fan of Joker 2019 cinematography, then you'll be glad to know that Lawrence Scher has come on again as the cinematographer, even citing Francis Ford Coppola's One from the Heart as a visual inspiration for the film. And, the, you know, talking about amazing cinematography, how about that amazing score? Because we are once again getting Hilda Goodner-Tears, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that second name, coming back to compose yet another chilling score for the sequel. So also as for the cast, in addition to Lady Gaga, of whom we're most certainly going to go on about in just a second, we also have Brendan Gleeson, Catherine Keener, Harry Lorty, and Jacob Lofland joining the cast of Joker 2, although we don't really know what roles they're playing. We do have other cast members such as Zazie Beetz returning to that of her role as Sophie Dumond, and you may remember her from the first movie, and it kind of makes me think, oh god. What's going to happen in the second movie with that character? The release date of Joker 2 was announced on August 4th of 2022 when Todd Phillips and Lady Gaga uploaded a video that not only gave us the release date of October 4th, 2024, but also a hint at what new approach the sequel would take. So this was shown through the release date video playing the theme of the classical musical song Cheek to Cheek, further reinforcing the rumors up until that point that Joker fully adieu would be a musical to some extent. In various interviews with the composer Hilda Goodner-Dottir, she said this about the musical aspects, it's an interesting decision. It's both logical and also very surprising for me, as well as the audience. So far, it's just been a really beautiful conversation, and I'm really excited to see how it unfolds. All I can say is there's going to be a lot of music. That's all I can give away. As for Zazie Beetz, of whom we said was returning to her role as Sophie Dumont, she was asked about the musical aspects to the sequel and said, I actually think it makes wonderful sense. I wasn't really surprised by that. Todd has always had a creative approach to the character. I love musicals and I think of them as the characters are feeling and experiencing so much that they can only sing and dance about it, whether in sorrow or joy. And so I can see Arthur, who is feeling and experiencing so much dancing and singing about it. He's the Joker, so I think it makes sense to me. So this has got a mixed reaction from fans, some who voice their love for the idea and of course others who completely outright reject this. So for me personally, and I'm like not a huge musical guy at all, to warrant a Joker sequel in where Todd Phillips said not only did he need the same thematic resonance in order to explore another story, which he clearly found since we're getting another installment, but he also needed to do something that was pretty bold in order to just in general, take another stab. So the ability to bring that out in the second movie through this 
fully adieu, this shared madness, if you will, mixed in with the musical elements adds just so much creativity and potential with the natural flair that the characters of Harley Quinn and the Joker just embody. So to now dive into what the movie is about a little bit more, right before we get into those plot details, the title Joker Fully Adieu was our first big clue as to what the premise of the movie surrounded. So Fully Adieu which is French for folly of two, is an induced delusional disorder, which is a rare psychiatric syndrome in where the delusional disorder is a shared psychosis from one individual to another. This quickly led fans to putting two and two together with the sequel adapting the somewhat bad romance between the Joker and Harley Quinn. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself there. Um, Mad Love. So Mad Love, as I'm sure many of you know, is a story set within the continuity of Batman the Animated Series. And it was a comic that gave us the origin for Harley Quinn. This saw her as Joker's psychologist at Arkham Asylum. And as many of you know, she fell in love with her patient and ultimately helped break him out of Arkham Asylum. The, the story also subtly gets into the mistreatment and abuse of Harley Quinn from that of the Joker. Her even somewhat kind of being like, screw Joker, only to then once again be dragged and drawn back in, which you can bet your ass this film will likely get into as well. However, what I will say at the same time is that it's important to know that Joker by Todd Phillips and the sequel, Fully Adieu, are Elseworlds films. And as I say, adaptations don't copy and paste, especially not Elseworlds entries. And so it is expected that Todd Phillips would also tread new ground while adapting the origin of Harleen Quinzel's character in Arthur Flex world. And with all the details that we got through peaks at filming, that does certainly seem to be the case, of which we'll get into in just a second. But to set the stage for the plot details for Fully Adieu, we need to go to the ending of the first Joker movie. So given the ending events of Joker, as many of you may remember, Arthur Fleck killed Murray Franklin on his talk show and he was soon arrested. Now shortly afterwards, the police car transporting him gets crashed into and the crowd of clowns rioting in Gotham City celebrate the chaos that Joker himself has incited. We then cut to the very ending scene at Arkham State Hospital, in where it seemingly takes place some unknown time after the events of the Murray Franklin talk show, with Arthur recounting the story to this therapist that he goes on to kill. This also as well, one thing I do want you guys to keep in mind, also encourages the audience to further question how much of that story we saw in the first movie was accurate, with examples being shown in the film with how Sophie Dumond, played by Zuzzy Beats, never even spent any time with Arthur, and that was all just in his head. So as for the plot details and events of the actual sequel film, so we're finally at this point now, from what we can see from set photos, despite the seeming open to interpretation aspect of the first movie, what has been shown so far seems to indicate a direct continuation from the ending of Joker 2019. Now, although having said that, what I do want to say is that I'd be willing to bet especially with the movie's title being Fully Adieu, the sequel will still likely have a very strong sense of unreliable narration from different perspectives from that of Joker and Harley Quinn. In doing so, maintaining the audience questioning what is really true and real at certain points in the sequel, just like the first movie, let alone whose perspective it might be from, with the movie possibly bouncing between both characters through the course of the runtime. So we know that the sequel continues off from the ending events of the first Joker because filming has shown us that Arthur Fleck is being taken to the Superior Court of Gotham by police transport to face trial for the crimes that he committed in the first movie. So we will likely be seeing a really chilling courtroom scene with it addressing him admitting on the Murray Franklin talk show that he killed the three Wayne employees, incited a riot, as well as 
also killing Murray Franklin on live television. Now, during the filming of the Superior Court of Gotham, we saw many people still in support for Arthur Fleck as he arrives to the court, as his actions in the first movie inspired a massive rebellious clown movement for those who were just as frustrated at the issues highlighted in the first movie surrounding the rich and powerful. There's all kinds of signage posts saying like, Joker, we love you, not guilty, and just images of his makeup and much, much more, with people even going right up to his vehicle and tapping on the window as we can see Arthur just kind of looking back in awe at how many supporters he actually has. Just truly realizing that he's no longer a nobody and that he has started something huge. But also, of course, there are many people in the crowd who are against Arthur, booing him and holding up signs saying he belongs in prison. Now, one thing to consider is given how long some cases take to go to trial. It's likely that the sequel for Le Adieu will take place at least some, you know, a little bit of time after the ending events of Joker. Now, sometimes cases like this can even take a couple of years, give or take, to go to trial, even if they're a very high profile case like Arthur Flex. It's also important to consider as well that this could just be Arthur Fleck turning up to his plea hearing because that would still get a bunch of press, supporters, and just overall still garner massive attention from people in Gotham. It's honestly hard to know right now because it could still be a trial and his defense could be arguing insanity. This is what I mean about the somewhat gaps and blanks that we have with, although I can gather quite a bit, there's still quite a bit at the same time about the plot that I don't know. But there's still the juiciest things yet to come. So having said all of that about how long he was actually in Arkham at the end of the first movie and how long it could have taken this to go to trial or have his plea hearing, this is where things get very, very interesting because all of this will leave enough time from the ending of the first movie for Arthur to get to know someone before he goes to trial, which brings us to Lady Gaga's Harleen Quinzel, in where it seems that things could be going quite a bit differently from the traditional canon of their origin. So as many of you have likely already seen at this point, there's quite a bit of set coverage of Harleen Quinzel attending the Superior Court of Gotham and going inside to actually sit in on the trial, of which we know is being prosecuted by none other than District Attorney Harvey Dent, thanks to signs displayed from those who are in support of Arthur, labeling Dent is a clown. Now, as we have Harleen Quinzel going into the court building, sometimes she's in this normal attire and just walking in. At other times, she's walking in with more of a Harley Quinn look, even rallying the Joker followers in support of Arthur. This could be two different days of the hearing or trial, or perhaps just done for a different reason, such as the different perspectives from Harley in the movie. Like, honestly, when it comes to filming and stuff like this, who knows what kind of things are actually going to get turned around in the edit and what will be used for perhaps a shared madness for the adieu moment. But the reason why I say things could go quite differently from that of the traditional Joker and Harley Quinn origin story is because there's an important moment that happens as we see Harleen go up the steps in the middle of the massive crowd of people gathered for Arthur Fleck's trial. And in this moment, she's confronted by what seem to be two religious people saying that she is going to hell. Now, why is she going to hell? Well, this is because they present to her a newspaper, and this paper gives us a huge, absolutely massive teaser for how this iteration of Harleen Quinzel knows the Joker. So as you're seeing on screen right now, the newspaper from the Gotham Examiner reads the headline as follows. Crazy in love. It displays a mugshot of Harleen Quinzel being admitted to Arkham State Hospital sometime in the past, showing her name there on the plaque that she's holding with another piece of text saying, Joker has a new love. And to me, this honestly makes quite a bit of sense when you think about it, given that the press will run with any tidbit that they can get, especially with a trial as huge and as public as this. So one part of it being that they would want to advertise Joker's new love, his new girlfriend. But the biggest thing about it is that Joker's girlfriend 
And I don't know how many people are really thinking about this, even with a lot of people knowing about this newspaper, is that Joker's girlfriend is currently a free citizen in society in Gotham attending the trial, but was once herself a patient of Arkham State Hospital. Not currently a patient like Arthur is, but was once a patient. Now, as you can imagine, as a result of this, from both sides of the audience in front of the Superior Court of Gotham, Joker supporters likely look at her as somewhat of this mascot while he's on trial, whereas the others who want to see Arthur pay for his crimes kind of probably look at Harleen Quinzel as though she's absolutely nuts for being with the man who killed the three Wayne employees and shot Murray Franklin on live TV. Such as, you know, this lady saying that she's going to hell for being with him. So you're probably thinking now, okay, that, that's quite a bit different from her being his therapist. So, so what is going on here in Todd Phillips's iteration of Harleen Quinzel? So my theory is that after learning this from this set prop of the newspaper, when Arthur got put into Arkham State Hospital at the end of the first Joker movie, he meets Harleen Quinzel there, who has likely already been a patient at Arkham State Hospital for some period of time already, long before Arthur even arrives. Now, I don't know why she would have been put there or whatever, but again, Lady Gaga's 37 years old. For all we know, Harleen, the character, is around the same age, and she could have been there since her mid-30s, her early 30s, or even her late, late 20s. There's also rumors out there that both Arthur and Harleen Quinzel bond over Judy Garland and Gene Kelly music in therapy sessions, and I actually believe this because it really does naturally fit into the musical aspect of the film and, you know, how they would have similar taste. Plus, we do know for a fact that this will actually be some of the music in Joker Fully Adieu, and some of that being from Judy Garland, as we've heard Lady Gaga's Harleen Quinzel belting out the lyrics from That's Entertainment and also Be a Clown during scenes being shot on the set of Joker 2. So getting back to it, I think that this newspaper being presented to Harley when she's out in Gotham in public at the time of the trial, showing that she was previously in Arkham, what happens is that previously, Harleen likely became infatuated with Arthur when he entered the hospital and when they spent time together during their stay, with perhaps even this photo, as teased by Todd Phillips, maybe even showing us our first signs of that. But here's the the thing, it's likely that Harleen Quinzel has served most of her time in Arkham for whatever reason she was put there and is due for release towards the beginning of the movie or maybe sometime before the events of the movie and they'll maybe show us her time as a patient in there, getting to know Arthur perhaps in flashbacks to parallel the present day scenes. Again, this is where there's a few blanks as to how they're exactly going to tackle that. But in the grand scheme of things, Arthur, you know, in my mind, had only really just got there and has only likely spent so much time with her by the time Harleen gets back into society. Also, don't get me wrong, the court date could have taken quite a long while to start ramping up, so they could have spent enough time together to fall in love with each other in Arkham State Hospital by the time she even gets released. Now, obviously, this would be quite different to her origins in that of the source material with regards to her being a therapist. But for now, honestly, because of this very newspaper being shoved in in Harley's face and the Gotham Examiner trying to defame her and just trying to get a bit of a story because it's like, hey, there's Joker, right? This is his trial. This is a high profile news story. This is his girlfriend. And oh, lo and behold, she happened to be a patient as well. It just turns out that she's now, I don't know, rehabilitated and out on the streets. Is she really rehabilitated though? The good thing about this, and this is what leads me to talk about what other details we have next, is that this would mean that Arthur has his biggest fan on the outside. And with his trial coming up, that could come in very handy for him when it comes to an escape. So this is where things get a bit more ambiguous with regards to plot details with the scenes that we saw filmed, but there were still certainly scenes filmed that give us clues. So one thing we know is that Arthur rocks up to his trial at the Superior Court of Gotham in this suit. And from other shots of filming, even though it looks like he's wearing maybe a slightly different suit, it is indeed the same suit. So get this, 
It was reported that during the filming for the Superior Court of Gotham set, there would not only be protesters there, but explosions. And as a result, Arthur's suit reflects damage from an explosion. You know, it's got, you know, dust covered over it in certain areas, making the color a bit brighter, but in other areas you can still see the original color of the suit. Arthur's head seems to be bleeding just a little bit. So I think it's safe to say that yes, during the trial of Arthur Fleck, for the crimes that he committed as Joker, Arthur Fleck manages to escape into Gotham City. And this is where some other parts of filming may be quite familiar to some of you, because given the amount of support Joker has from the clown movement still being a thing, it's likely the explosions at the Superior Court are thanks to them, and could even be likely that Harleen Quinzel helped organize it too. Now obviously the trial would have been shot completely outside the scenes we've seen from filming, and likely just on the soundstage somewhere, so we don't really know how long the courtroom scene will last in the movie. It could be a few minutes and then boom, you know, getting out of there. Or it could last like for a solid 20 plus minutes of chilling prosecution. Maybe a moment similar to the tense build up on the Murray Franklin talk show when you heard the score just kick in right up until that moment and where Arthur shot Murray Franklin. It's just this time a massive explosion going off. And given the trial contains Harvey Dent, it would be pretty cool if there was an Easter egg showing how the explosion disfigured Harvey Dent's face into Two-Face. So the reason why I'm confident that, you know, not only do the explosions take place, I, I think that's very obvious, but Arthur gets out through the help of Joker followers is because we know there's shots in filming in where Arthur gets out of a car and starts running, and he has a couple of clown followers running after him. And I truly think that unlike the original theories of people saying that maybe, you know, Arthur was seeing other alternate versions of himself chasing after him and these were just stunt doubles, those ideas came before when we knew all this stuff with regards to the explosion. What we're really seeing here is a couple of clown followers who were actually seeing scene present in the crowd outside of the Superior Court of Gotham. So they're real people and they were real protesters outside in support of Arthur. So after the explosion happens, I'm willing to bet that they'll help him get away by driving away from the scene of the explosion. Now you may be asking, well, why would Arthur be running away from them? Well, it, it could just be that what might potentially happen is that Arthur gets a bit freaked out by the scope of all of this. Maybe the clown fanboys of his come on a bit too strong while he's in the car. Or maybe when he's knocked out, by the way, in the explosion, he gets carried to the car during the escape. And there's a lot of people there to distract the police outside. And that could be very, very helpful. So imagine how chaotic the scene can be. He gets put into the car and maybe when he comes comes to if he's not already awake in that scene he's just you know really dazed and surprised and just kind of wants to get out of there and starts running and when he starts running down the street as you've seen in many recordings you obviously have two of his loyal followers who helped him get in the car just kind of chasing after him being like joker joker arthur you know we love you but he's just like i, I need to get out of here and thus leaving him to wander around fairly dazed from the explosion like we've seen in other set photos of Joker too. Like after that, there's plenty of scenes with him with the damaged version of the suit after the explosion, just walking in Gotham, trying to like avoid people's stares because most people by this point would recognize Arthur Fleck on the streets of Gotham. The only other connecting pieces for the plot of Joker is that there's evidently quite a visual transformation for Harleen Quinzel. And I have no doubt that we'll be seeing some of her day-to-day -day life set after her time at Arkham City. State Hospital yet before the trial, as we've seen plenty of shots of her with her long hair and her coat walking the steps that Arthur walked before her in the first movie. But at some point, things change, not only from like the normal Harleen Quinzel look to then the court red kind of jacket look that she had to then a final transformation in where she gets a haircut and a different outfit. Now Todd Phillips has even shown her in the same elevator that we saw Arthur in as he transformed into Joker in the first movie. And it makes you wonder if after visiting the same place, she has a similar experience in where she gets even more unhinged and gets this look to symbolize her own transformation. And also guys, uh, as I kind of teased earlier, given the location that this elevator is at, being where Arthur used to live, 
It does make me wonder if Harleen could come across Sophie Dumond since we know she was Arthur's neighbor and she's reprising her role. And um, let's just say, I, I don't know if she learns about Sophie and, 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 and there's some weird jealousy there. And, and I, I don't know, but I wouldn't hold out much hope for her. And there could be a bit of a baptism by blood from Harley before she goes back into the elevator as seen in this photo to then go on to do whatever she does. Similar to again how Arthur killed that guy in his apartment towards somewhat the nearing ending events of the first movie and then he came out as Joker. And so this is where there's a bit of a disconnect in the plot for me with trying to figure things out. There, there's a bit of cohesion here which I can maybe link. So it all got up to the point of filming on the famous Joker stairs that Arthur danced down. And now this time, Arthur Fleck is seen walking around the corner right at the bottom of the stairs and he notices Harley near the top. And during the filming, he's seen at the bottom looking up the stairs at her and he recognizes her and he exclaims, Lee, twice. And then he starts running up the stairs towards her. We see the lampposts light up one by one and maybe this is the beginning of another musical number. So that kind of infers to me, like what, after the explosion, was he walking around the whole of Gotham with his damaged suit avoiding stairs from people only to then just like happen to bump into her on the Joker stairs and then he, you know, runs up there? I, I, I don't know. This is what I mean. Is there not any in-between of Harley and Joker after the explosion. There's a few scenes shot in where they're talking and Arthur grabs her collar when he gets up the stairs and starts shaking her violently, very much so mistreating her, but then he kind of flips and then he kisses her on the head. And Harley this whole time just seems to be in a complete daydream daze, as if she's exhausted, uh, you know, just completely apathetic, kind of staring into space, not really looking at Arthur but kind of talking to him at the same time and this is where she kind of breaks out of that and again this could be a part of that coping mechanism that we mentioned Zazie Beast talk about towards the beginning of this video and where she deals with that uh, through dancing. So this is where we see her dancing and there's a couple of different takes of this same scene shot in where a bunch of GCPD officers arrive to the stairs and come storming down the steps as Harley is singing that's entertainment. Now in each take it seems, it seems as though as if Harley herself called the cops there to apprehend Arthur. And in all versions, Arthur himself seems to give up on the idea of running regardless. But depending on the take, there's one there where he's just kind of got his head hung low and he's not really doing anything and he lets himself get arrested. But then there's another take where he just says, screw it, and starts dancing alongside Harley as the police officers grab him. Like he, he's like, screw it. Like I'm just gonna relish in getting arrested and start dancing dancing and just overall get arrested with a fun flair. Another question that comes to mind is why would Harley call the cops on Arthur if what we assumed is that she maybe even helped him escape the Superior Court of Gotham? Honestly, who knows there? And I would love your ideas down in the comments below. There's a lot of blanks at this point because again, who knows if they met up before this, but then again, we see Arthur look up the steps after the explosion and walking around Gotham and exclaim, Lee? Lee? As if that's the first time he's seen her in, I guess, since the explosion. But who knows if they did meet before this and, you know, maybe Arthur as the Joker mistreated her as per the source material. And I wouldn't be remotely surprised if Todd Phillips actually does lean into that abusive relationship and also tell two different perspectives, one from Harley's side and one from Joker's side on what that was really like with maybe two drastically contrasting experiences. And who knows if she just wants to be back in the asylum with Arthur because that's her picture perfect life with him where everything was better than what it is out here. And even though this was some of the final things to be seen shot, this doesn't necessarily mean that this scene is the end of the film. As for all we know, the moments after this could see a lot more footage of them both back at Arkham State Hospital doing God knows what. Now there are plenty of shots of Arkham State Hospital as well that were captured of it being on fire and it looks like there could be a breakout because we see lots of spotlights all searching frantically for people on the loose. So naturally this makes me wonder, are they both trying to escape again? I can't imagine this would have been in the distant past because, you know, how would Harleen Quinzel be allowed 
to be released into public as a citizen again, like we see during the events of the movie. If she had set the whole of Arkham Asylum on fire, I'm pretty sure they would add way more time onto her staying there. So that does indicate that maybe this is her and Arthur being put back in there and maybe towards the ending events of the movie. But then again, it's, it's somewhat unreliable. Like who knows how much of this picture I've painted remains the way I presented it in this video in the actual movie. I'm definitely confident about certain things, like again, the Gotham Examiner newspaper showing that Harleen Quinzel was once a patient at Arkham Asylum. So what does that mean for why she's out in public now and, and things like that? But even though I'm confident that that is correct, that could still be a distortion of reality within the actual movie. Do you know what I mean? So even though some people would be like, oh man, this was quite spoilery in areas with some of the clues that we gathered, I still wouldn't say that at all. Like we've seen only a minuscule amount of filming one part being majorly the superior court of gotham that's really only like one scene on the exterior and harley going in and then obviously the interior scenes we don't know with what was shot the actual scenes of arthur wandering the streets of gotham and then the stairs there's gonna be so much more to the movie than those three or four different things we've discussed so i think i'm gonna end my ramble there that is practically more or less, uh, at least I think, everything that we know so far about Joker fully a deux. And I am very much so looking forward to it. I'm very much so looking forward to comparing some of what we talked about today to future teasers that we get in the first teaser trailer, the, the actual main official trailer, and thinking, oh, okay, maybe we had this wrong or maybe we had that right based off of concrete set photos that we did observe during filming. But regardless, I would love to know, are you excited for Joker to Fili a deux? Are you not so excited? Do you just maybe need to see a little bit more? Are you like me, not really a massive musical fan? Like, I, I really never watched them, to be honest. But I'm still really fascinated by this approach to the sequel and as a huge fan of DC Comics and the Joker and the first movie, I'm very excited to, to see how that's explored through even the vein of a musical. I think that sounds actually quite awesome. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Thanks for staying tuned for my whole ramble. Let me know if you got to this point in the video, that would be awesome. Subscribe for more videos like this, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you fellow Jokers in the next video. Goodbye.